for week uh, episode three, week six of the 2022 college football season. We got ourselves a co-host today. Uh, we got my buddy Kyle Gibbs uh, going to be joining us here on the pod episode three. Um, as you can see, the lowdown here on the screen. We are going to talk a little Jayhawks. Um, I'll give Kyle a chance to introduce himself. He's a big Illini guy. Uh, go through the top 25. Talk about some bets for the upcoming weekend. Go through the cam- uh, fan comments. Week six preview and play a little chess. So, Kyle Gibbs, uh, what's what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, well, first of all, Aaron, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. It's a, it's a very new up-and-coming podcast that's going to really, you know, take off. I can see a lot of potential in this show. Keep it up, man. But, uh, but uh, thank you for having me. And, um, you know, we've been buddies for how long now? Since we were uh, probably 11 or 12 years old, playing basketball together back in the day, baseball, we've been... You know, you know, we played softball recently. We play soccer together. All been, kinds of stuff. Been through it all. Been through it all. Been through it all. I'm a uh, University of Illinois alum, so that's kind of my background. Big Ten football is is, is kind of my background. Um, you know what I'm most knowledgeable about. So I'm hoping to give you guys some insight on maybe some bets later in the Big Ten, and and uh, you and you know see how I can make you guys some money too. <laughs> we love being profitable on the podcast. Yep. Uh, first things first, man. Kansas is still undefeated. And ranked now number 19 in the country. How about that? Uh, just a couple quick hitters for you. First time since 09, we're 5 0. First time since 09, we're ranked. First time in 62 years that the Jayhawks will be playing a game in October with undefeated ranked versus undefeated ranked. That's sick. Uh, we're hosting college game day this weekend. That's a first time from Lawrence. Of course, basketball quite a bit, but never the football team. Um, huge win against Iowa State last weekend, man. Huge win. Uh, first three games of the season, you know, we're the number one scoring offense in the country. So, you know, we're putting points on the board and we got held to 14 points and, uh, didn't expect the defense to win us any games this year, but they did, man. They stepped up, uh, you know, they went one for four on field goals. So you go a little bit thankful for that, of course, but, uh. Yeah, 4-0. Uh, huge injury loss. Daniel Hyshaw. Uh, Neil, I think, is still kind of has been our number one running back. But Hyshaw, you know, I bet a lot of you guys saw on Twitter his big breakout run, like that 70-yarder against Duke. He broke five or six tackles. Um, he's a stud, man. He's, he's a good blocker, getting in dirty, doing doing the work. Uh, tough injury. Tough injury there. But, um, you know, next man up. Next man up. That's why you play D1 football. Um so I'm liking our chances. We host uh, TCU this weekend. Like I said, five and zero and ranked um, versus TCU, who is uh, ranked 17. They're also undefeated. Uh, Vegas has got us as seven and a half point dogs right now. Line opened at like four and a half or five. So public is loving TCU, but I kind of like I kind of like that for the Hawks, man. Uh, little chip on their shoulder. I think they'll be playing. That's a great bet, if, especially if you can get the hook on that seven and a half. I would I would I would play that. Like I said, KU is. Undefeated on spread, undefeated on money line, and before last week, undefeated on the overs. Four and one, you don't hate it, man. You don't hate it. Um, so that'll be a fun one to watch. Um, I don't know if you have anything to contribute on the on the Kansas side, man. We'll we'll be uh, waving the wheat all weekend and all year, man. Lance Leipold, uh, coaching rumors, of course, but I mean, you never know. But he he says that he's happy in Lawrence, that he likes hanging out. Um, mm-hmm. You know. He got half a mil at Buffalo a year, and now he's up to like 2.8. I'm sure that'll go up to four or so uh, after this year. You know, they'll do anything they can to keep him. But, um, you know, as you can see on the screen there, uh, front page headline, Leipold happy at KU as Wisconsin. You know, of course, because he coached Wisconsin Whitewater back in the day, grew up about 15 minutes from Madison. So scary stuff. We thought Nebraska was, was you know, intimidating for us. That's even worse. But – he says he's happy. I trust him. We kind of gave him that break. He's like 67, man. He's kind of an old dude. I don't know how much he's going to be one of moving around. And, you know, my fingers crossed, man, that he's happy and that he's chilling. So we'll see, man. That's about what we got on the Jayhawks this week. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, just to add on to the Lance Le- uh, Leipold talk, um, you know, Nebraska, Wisconsin, two two big jobs that have opened up recently. And, um, you know, he does have history in both states coaching, Wisconsin Whitewater. He's he's a former head coach. And also, you know, I believe he was an assistant at Nebraska, actually, for a year. So, you know, there are some yep. ties there, but it, it'll definitely be interesting to, to uh, see how that unfolds as the season continues. Um, also, one quick question. Uh, 
Aaron, what do you make of the lower scoring game against Iowa State? Do you think that's a result of playing a good defense or are we guys just struggling on offense and you still find a way to get it done? Um, probably a little bit of both. You know, honestly, you, you, as, a, as a fan, you love to see it because, you know, the games before that we put up 56, 55, 48, 35, you know, we were putting points on the board. So that's the obvious question of, you know, what happens when the offense struggles? You know, if, if we're not scoring 55, can we, can we, you know, can defense step up and put it down? Um, so as a fan, you love to see it just because they won a scrappy, you know, different kind of game, not quite the shootout that they're used to. Um, and yeah, also what you said, I think that Iowa State's the best opponent so far. Uh, maybe Houston, but um, I feel like Iowa State's the best team so far until you have to win it in a little bit of a different way. And like I said, Iowa State missed a couple field goals. You know, they kind of played a sloppy game. So, you know, the breaks fell our way, but you got to take advantage of them. Um, and that's what they did. I would say it's a little concern. Um, but then you go against TCU, who is, you know, a similar type of us of a run and gun. You know, I think the total for that game is set at like 69 and a half or something ridiculous. So there'll be some points on Saturday. It's just, you know, the age old question of who's going to score more. Very true. Yeah. And as you can see, Iowa State, you know, or, uh, you know, only scored 11 points, which is a, a great defensive performance by Kansas. As you can see, they have given up quite a few points to some pretty good teams, but, you know, you know only 11 points to Iowa State is really good for for a uh, Kansas squad. Absolutely, absolutely. 5-0 and oh, um, for a team that's not historically a football school is, is pretty good. And, and again, talk about football schools that are kind of on the, the come up, if you will, you know, making noise when they traditionally haven't. Uh, the Illinois Fighting Illini, your alma mater. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, four and one start. You know, one game against Iowa, or sorry, Indiana. Um, easily could be five and zero. Oh, uh, you know, in the Big Ten West. What, you know, what are your thoughts about the team so far this year? Oh, they're really excited about the team over in Champaign. You know, there's there was a lot of preseason hype for this team. Had a decent year last year. It wasn't the year we wanted, five and seven, but had some big upsets on the road at Penn State, on the road at Minnesota. Both two ranked wins. A lot of our losses kind of just slipped, for, slipped through our fingers at the end of the game. We controlled a lot of those games. You know, Brett Bielema has done a tremendous job in his first two years at Illinois. He really yes, has. Sir. Illinois, Illinois has proven to be a really tough job for, for many coaches. And, uh, you know, a lot of it comes down to recruiting. And Illinois has been a tough state to recruit because the Big Ten is all over it. You see Illinois players at Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State every year. Not to mention Northwestern, who is also in state. So, you know, that's been one of the battles he's been fighting. He's been doing a great job. You know, we have, we have a pretty talented team. We have the nation's leading rusher, Chase Brown, who I believe has rushed for over 100 yards in all five games this season. Big so, time. So, so that's pretty uh, big time. Pretty good to be able to rely on a back like that. Um, you know, Brett Bielaba even uh, went as far as saying he's possibly the most talented back he, he's ever coached. Which, if you know anything about Brett Bielema, a former Wisconsin coach, Coach Melvin Gordon. So, that's pretty high praise. Um, but yeah, so as we're looking at the schedule here, 4-1, and one, you know, could be better, 5-0. and oh, But 4-1 and is really good for this team right here. You know, at Iowa was tough. It was a Friday night game. Indiana, you know, Indiana, Indiana. Indiana, my bad. I slipped up too, same, same thing. <laughs> yep. So, so... So we played Wyoming week zero actually. So that Iowa or that Indiana game was was week one. So we did not have any film on Indiana either. So you know maybe that's a storyline there. Indiana had a game to go off of some film and to scout, but you know Indiana had that level of surprise. Maybe Connor Bazelak, former Mizzou quarterback, actually had a pretty great fourth quarter game winning drive to uh, to to seal that game for them. You know we struggled with turnovers in that game. Same with. Virginia, actually, we turned the ball over quite a few times in the Virginia game, but but uh, we found a way to beat them pretty handily with that. And uh, do not believe we've had a single turnover in the last two games. So that's been something they've really been focusing on. That's good coaching. Mr. Bielam over Great there, coaching. that's good coaching. Yep, he, he saw a problem and uh, definitely addressed it in practice. I am sure of that. But, um, you know, we got to talk about the big win this past weekend at Wisconsin. Somewhere Illinois hasn't won since 2002 at Camp Randall. Pretty big deal if you ask me. So. You know, Wisconsin, they, they are having a little bit of a down year, but, you know, part of why they're having a down year is because we played so well and beat them. You know, if they would have beaten us, they still would have their head coach probably. You know, a few things would be different. But, you know, that game was just 
I mean, really, Illinois dominated that game. It, it, it's really hard to look at it any way, uh, any way else. Wisconsin was held to two rushing yards in that game, which brings me, brings me to my next point. Illinois' defense, I mean, we got to start talking about them in the yeah, we do. top five defenses, top ten at least, defenses in the country. I mean, if you look at points allowed, yeah, we gave up 23 to Indiana. That's a little bit of a sore spot on the defense, but giving up, what is that, 19 points in the other four games? Great mental math. It's, it's pretty solid. That's under five points a game, so that's pretty – it's pretty impressive, and it's it's going to be hard to lose a football game if you're keeping somebody under six, three, zero, ten. Yep, that's. Yep. You want to talk about another team that's going to cover the spread for you? I mean, look at those numbers. Yep, Illinois has. I believe we covered all four of our wins, and our loss was actually only a push. So, so we are four zero and one on the spread this year. So, it's, we are undefeated on the spread. Um, here's another question for you. If you look here, right underneath uh, the Illini here. First in the Big Ten West, um, you know, I think that everyone in the Big Ten West is one and one in conference play, if I'm not mistaken. Everyone but Wisconsin. Everyone but Wisconsin. Ooh. I believe Wisconsin's 0-2, but everyone else is 1-1. and one, But so. what, are your, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions uh, of how that, you know, kind of grinded out West is going to be in the Big Ten? Who's going to come out on top? What? Who, who, are, you sca- who are you scared of? Who, who do you think that, you know, we got to go in there and beat? That's a great question, Aaron. I, I, I really appreciate that question. So... So the Big Ten West is wide open. Everyone kind of knew it coming into the season. You know, preseason Minnesota, I think, was clearly viewed as the number one, followed by, you know, Iowa, Purdue, Wisconsin. We're all kind of in the mix. Illinois definitely wasn't being talked about as a Big Ten West contender coming into the year, but at this point in time, we're we're in position to contend. You know, I would say it's probably a four-team race still. Minnesota, Iowa, Purdue, and Illinois, I think. I I really don't see Wisconsin figuring out figuring it out. Northwestern's bad. Nebraska bad. is talented, <laughs> actually. I I'm pretty sure they beat uh, Indiana this weekend and actually killed them. So you know, Indiana turns out to not be looking that great, but you know that's how it goes sometimes. And then um, yeah, so so Minnesota, Purdue, Iowa. Um, all one and one. So when I look at our schedule coming up, I see a lot of winnable games. A lot of winnable games that can propel us into potentially winning the Big Ten West, which would be a big deal. I don't know the exact last time Illinois did that. I think it was also early 2000s, 01, 02, somewhere in there. But, you know, we can get a fact check on that here, Aaron. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, so when I look at these games coming up, so we play Iowa at home next week. Followed by Minnesota at home. So back-to-back home games, back-to-back Big Ten West against two of the contenders I just momentum, named. Momentum, momentum. So very important games. Um, very important games. So we can get into the Iowa game just a little bit, I guess. Um, I'll actually be be attending the game this weekend, so very excited to see that game. It's a 6.30 p.m. kickoff. Yeah, we got, we got your boys out in the field, as you can see, a little down. We may jump around a little bit. Um, he'll be in Champaign. I'll be in Lawrence next weekend. Uh, your boys are going out into the field to to do some on you know, on site studying. Um, check out what's going on. So we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back with uh, some info for you. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. What are you most excited about for a uh, four and one Memorial Stadium in Champaign come Saturday night under the lights? That's a great question, and and one that I'm eager to see what the turnout is. You know, Illinois has struggled for years to fill that stadium up. It's a it's a large stadium, you know, I, th- I think the total capacity is somewhere in the 60,000, 70,000 range, which is definitely on the higher end for a team that has struggled, you know, just to put it blatantly honest, you know. So, so you know, I would really like to see over 50,000 there. I'm, I'm not quite sure if we're at a sellout, you know. 6.30 p.m. on a on a Saturday night, people are going to be driving down from Chicago, over from St. Louis, and they got to drive back, you know, uh, potentially after the game. So that that always makes it difficult sometimes. Usually afternoon games might be the best to sell out. But a night game under the lights, though, you know, I think that's really good for students. Huge. I, I would really expect students to come out in uh, full strength. I saw some, some alumni bought like a couple thousand extra – student tickets and gave them out for free today and apparently they were all snatched up within 10 minutes so huge huge for the Illini to to hopefully get a good home crowd uh 
Well, what do you think about Lawrence this weekend? Um, oh, I'm excited. Like, you know, we mentioned earlier, college game day. Uh, first ever time, you know, of course, they've hosted basketball game day before. Um, but first ever college football game day. Um, yeah, that's big having game day. It'll that's going to be exciting. That'll be fun. You know, they had it at, you know, kind of another non, you know, because it's always in Alabama, Tennessee, Ohio State. You know, they get it once a year. But, I mean, we saw what happened in Boone, North Carolina when App State hosted it, uh, you know, three or four weeks ago. Man, that's like uh, that's huge. You know, for the things that it did for that town, for that program, is 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 nuts. And I, I think that it could do the same for Kansas. You know, just to put us on the map. Um, you know, a lot of people. You know, maybe big time SEC fans, big time. You know, Big Ten fans. They don't even they don't know the first thing about Kansas football. But sneak peek into Lawrence, and you know, sneak peek into you know campus. Um, that sure will be cool. Um, and and you know, ten you know, eleven a.m. kick. Um. And yeah, should like you said, you know, we have a little bit of a smaller stadium, uh, oldest stadium in college football. Uh, we need to renovate it <laughs> bad, <laughs> but uh, we had one sellout in the last thirteen years, and we're going on our third in a row. So, I mean, again, momentum, tides are turning. Um, That's big, as they call it. The booth should be rocking. Booth will be rocking. Let's see. So, do you want to talk about TCU a little bit? I mean, I mean, it looks like that's going to be your first ranked opponent, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Big game. Big game. First ranked opponent, and uh, I may hop over here because if I believe, yeah, TCU was also unranked. So they were another undefeated team that was kind of on the outside looking in, but they had a commanding win over. I want to say SMU. Uh, let me double check here. Uh, last weekend they beat Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma. They beat Oklahoma. They beat SMU the week before. I think they put up like fifty five on them. And then yeah, Oklahoma with their second straight loss um knocks OU out of the rankings. So I'm sure that the Horn Frogs are just as fired up again because they've had a, a you know a rough six or eight years here um after being kind of a powerhouse. Um and so I expect points to be on the board. Um I expect It'll be a shootout. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun game to go to. 11 a.m. game, you know, being a, a alumni from there. Um, you know, that would be cool just to see the town, just to see the people. Because, I mean, I would go to football games, and you could buy a ticket for $3 and walk in the stadium. And, you know, I was one of the few students that I even knew of that cared about the you know team or would go to the games. And, you know, any win, you know, my freshman year, we beat, you know, F, you know the, the lower tier – Rhode Island and we storm the field. You know, that's kind of a pathetic state to be in versus going six and, you know, on the verge of six and oh. Um so I expect it to be a shootout. I expect TCU to be ready to play. Um I think that a lot of people think that they're gonna handle us and so I'd like to see how the boys respond to that. Um but it'll be a good one. It'll be a good one. Um we got we got a, a special a third special guest here. Oh my uh, gosh! Third, first time third on the guess. pod, uh, Drew huge. Drew Patel. Let's just get a live reaction. He's a, a Mizzou alum. What thoughts on the Georgia game? You might have to scoot up a, um, a little bit to the mic. You know what? I don't really want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I've been led on and hurt two weeks in a row. Um, it was a fun day for Como and the Mizzou Tigers, but at the end of the day, they led us up, and um, there's not much more to say than that. Uh, but you know, we had a good little run, you know, it was a fun, entertaining game. Everyone was watching. The world was watching. Um, but you know what? We'll just go and try to win as many games this year as possible. That was our only chance of any sort of excitement this year. And we failed. Um, but, uh, you know what? I'll let these boys enjoy their spotlights of their teams right now. So you guys. Um, Absolutely. Drew. We, we may get you, you, we may get you back on here for a couple more, uh, some, some more input. Um, but yeah, real, real quick here, top 25 thoughts. Um, is there anything that jumps out to you? You know, Drew just mentioned Mizzou. Um, obviously Georgia dropped from one to two right there. Um, yep. probably rightfully so, you know, M Mizzou isn't the, the most star studded team in the world and put up a good fight for three and a half quarters. Um, but other than that, you know, what, what else catches your eye? Well, you know, the Big Ten is a little weak this year, but as you can see, we have three teams in the top ten still. But, uh, you know, they all they are all from the Big Ten East. I mentioned Big Ten West teams earlier. But um, Penn State jumps into the top ten for the first time this season. They're looking really good. Michigan and Ohio State, of course, have taken care of business every game this year. Um, 
Well, yeah, toward, what else jumps out at you? Towards the bottom, I look at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams. Um, you know, jump into the rankings after being not ranked last year. You know, dropping from the rankings. Baylor, A and M, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Minnesota, Florida State, Pittsburgh all dropped. Um, some new faces. You know, a team like TCU, a team like Kansas, a team like Syracuse. Um, you know, people that may not be as familiar with the spotlight. Love seeing the little numbers by their name. You know, that's just the added confidence. You know, when you turn on ESPN and you see Kansas and TCU and Syracuse playing, you know, oh, shoot, this isn't a random game anymore. These are these are some good teams. Um, Ole Miss, um, you know, I talked about them the last few weeks, jumps into number nine. Uh, I was down there visiting my sister this past weekend. Uh, caught the game against Kentucky. See, Kentucky dropped the 13. Ole Miss and Kentucky basically swapped spots. Um, that was also an 11 a.m. game. Um Grove was packed. Grove was rocking pregame and postgame. Great atmosphere. Um, had a great time. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of new teams in. It's uh, I like it. And then of course I would uh, be amiss if I did not mention Illinois receiving six votes, which um, it's probably the first time we've re- we've received votes in about ten years, which is a definitely a big deal for this program. And you know. Uh, puts us in that conversation with a win this week of potentially being ranked. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to uh, th- this weekend in Champaign. Absolutely. We'd love to see them hop in and hop into the top 25. We'd love to see us stay in the top 25, you know? Yep. Keep climbing. Um, one week at a time. So we'll 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 hop right here. We'll we'll check one fan comment from the last video. Uh, loyal supporter Jackson Borman. Shout out to you Shout from – St. Louis, Missouri, slash, you know, Butler University. Uh, what a guy. Great guy. Uh, fan question, how long until Jalen Daniels is on the Heisman watch? Um, again, this was uh, from, as you can see there, 12 days ago. Um, he's there. Uh, Vegas Odds, I think, has him 7th or 8th on the list. Um, wow. Look at him right there. Plus 3,000. Get your bets in now. Uh, that line will drop. Uh, you know, he's putting up. Best, I think he's he if he still doesn't through for the first four weeks he had the best QBR in the country. Um, of course, look at those names in front of him. You know, quarterbacks for Ohio State, Alabama, USC, Tennessee, and and Georgia. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> stiff competition. Pretty good competition. But a little you know, nineteen year old from Lawrence, Kansas. Keep doubting him. Keep doubting him. You know, he'll keep pounding. We'll 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 get up there. Um. So it's cool to see him up there. Um, I think that he is. Last I saw, like a uh, you know MGM Grand or, or uh, DraftKings or someone, he's he's the biggest liability for for Vegas right now. Um, he you know he he would be the biggest hit. So let's let's take it from the man and and everyone bet on Jalen Daniels and let's watch him go. You know, twelve and 0, 11 and one. Take it home for the boys. Uh, what else we got here? Hey, I got a question. What Drew? Drew's got a question. Come on, live, live Come on audience in. question. Come on in. Let's. We we're working with a single mic balanced on a growler. You know, so I'm just curious. Uh, what team outside of the top 25 has a really good sneaky sneaky really good chance to crack the top 25 this week? Wow. Let's check some teams that have. That's some a great question. Sneaky teams. Uh, so we could look at this one of two ways. Who's got a favorable matchup? And then, you know, right outside the top 25, we've got Washington State, Baylor, Florida State, Arkansas, James Madison, Florida, That's Maryland. Um, James Madison is, is an interesting one. You know, they've gotten some hype. I think that they're still undefeated, um, chugging away. So that would be that would be fun for them to get ranked. You know, again, another kind of new team to the party. Um, Florida State. And Arkansas, I'm gonna check who, check who these guys are playing. Let's see. Yeah, I'd like to see those matchups they have coming up this weekend. Do you have thoughts? Hmm, I'd have to look at the matchups. I haven't had a good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had I haven't uh, had a good look at the games yet. But you know what? I see some really good teams right outside that can really make some noise. I don't know if Illinois has a chance of even cracking top twenty five <laughs> this week. I don't know. Who do they play? They have a Iowa at home. Oh, that's so, a good game. So, so it is a good, uh, a, a good opponent. They will be favored at home. They're three and a half point favorites. Um, you know, of course, I got to go with them as my uh, team to watch on on just outside the top twenty five. But they do have quite a few teams to jump. So, you know, maybe they only just increase their votes and are still outside uh, with a win. But we'll see. 
you still got to just take it one game at a time. Absolutely. A quick, quick check. Again, we're not going to talk about Washington State. I've said it before. The Pac-12 doesn't quite exist as a real conference nope. in my eyes. Baylor goes to Morgantown, plays the Mountaineers, um, which would be a good win, but but nothing crazy. Florida State um, plays at NC State. Um, you know, number 14 in the country, that would be, a, a, I think, a win that could propel them up there. Arkansas goes to Mississippi State. I think that that would be one that could uh, propel them up there. Florida plays the uh, your Mighty Tigers. Um, again, they need to take care of business there. I think that they're 11-point favorites. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And then we have another uh, Big Ten matchup of two of these teams receiving votes. Ma Maryland plays uh, Purdue at home. So that's definitely a game to watch. Uh, I like Maryland in that matchup. So. There'll be another team to watch. Get your bets in. Get your bets in. Speaking of bets, um, do either of you guys have any lines, you know, looking at it early? We're recording this on a Tuesday night, so is there any early lines that, that stand out to you? I'm more of a Friday night kind of guy. Saturday morning at 10, All right, we got a sharp, 10 55. All right, we got a sharp better over here. He plays okay. the sharp lines. He <laughs> he, want, sharp. he wants the lines to make their movements and, and, you know, get on them right before kickoff. We can respect that. We can yeah. respect that. But, you know, an interesting game, uh, the Tennessee game, you know, I heard a little bit of a conversation on that and some riggy-looking lines. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys think about that riggy. game. Riggy? Really? Uh, according to uh, this uh, one Twitter savant that I follow uh, named Eric Sheehan, the, is that the is he the bishop? Um, I can't say that. Cannot confirm or deny. Confirm. No comments on the bishop. No confirm or deny. Um, but yeah. So speaking of that game, that is my best bet for the week. Uh, Tennessee minus three um, or two and a half, depending on if you're going to eat a little juice there. I would I would liquidate your your retirement account. I would sell your house. Um, I think that that's a lock. And speaking of a little bit of a rig, this is always the rig. ESPN. You can't see that at all. <laughs> ESPN Power Rankings has LSU as a fifty-three per, or fifty-eight percent chance to win that, whereas Vegas has Tennessee as a three-point favorite. Those disagreements always, yeah, little, Vegas always wins. They little, always know. little riggy to me. So I love Tennessee minus three, and I love Florida Gators minus ten and a half. Um, I think that Mizzou had their fun last weekend. I think that Florida. Has a little sour taste in their mouth there, being outside the top 25 with two losses. I think they're going to be uh, gunning for it. So Florida and Tennessee, there's also quite a few games of you know 10-point favorites. I think you could really string together a good money line, uh, money line parlay. Of course, Kansas plus 7, Kansas TCU over 69, lock it. Till the wheels fall off, right? Always. They kind of fell off last week, but um, you know, overall the average is pretty still good. Kansas, right? Kansas it? spread and Kansas is over. Those two bets together, 9-1. Through five games, so Pretty solid, all right. if you want to, yeah, you talk about making money. The those boys in Lawrence will make you some money. All right. Well, for my best bets of the week, let's see. I think I have three that I really like. I really like two of them being in the Illinois game, which I've made quite a bit of money on my line eye this year. Let's see what we got here. Illinois minus three and a half. I think the line is correct. I don't think we could be favored anymore. Like realistically, the public would bet it down, but I still love that line. You know, if you want to buy it down a half point to minus three, I think that's a fine idea, but really like minus three, minus three and a half. The total in that game is only 35 and a half points. <laughs> Two of the best defenses in the country going head to head. Game's going to all come down to some things like turnovers. Iowa secondary turns uh, teams over like no other. So. Definitely an interesting game to watch. On that total, though, I actually do like the over. Th 35 and a half. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the over in that game. I think Illinois gets 21, 24 points. Iowa in that 14, 17 range, somewhere in there. Pl play, played within a touchdown. But I, th I think that adds up over 35 and a half. You know, quick mental math. But I, I do think we get... Get the over in that matchup. And then another game I just mentioned, Maryland hosting Purdue Boilermakers. Maryland's minus three. I love it. I love Maryland minus three. Two is younger brother. Uh, pray for two, of course. <laughs> but uh, two is younger brother. Very talented quarterback at Maryland. Uh, Maryland puts up points. Purdue puts up points. That's also going to be quite a bit different play styles in uh, Illinois, Iowa. Probably a... Uh, Higher total, I would imagine. Yep, 60 points. So, 
Not really sure about the total, but um, Maryland minus three. I like that a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Drew, if anything that catches your eye. You know what? I'm just going to throw in a quick lock of the week that I have. I really uh, am a fan of Texas plus seven. I feel like they've kept a lot of good games close, and Minus I feel like seven. this is just another one where they keep it close down <laughs> to the fourth quarter. You know, one possession game and all throughout the second half. Sorry to burst you over, but Texas <laughs> is actually favored by oh, seven well, points. Uh, that explains why I really like Texas. <laughs> uh, tease Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Put in a little teaser. You could tease fourteen point tease. Tease, uh, tease Texas down to the money line. Tease Kansas up to plus fourteen, and tease the total of Illinois Iowa like down five. to twenty. 27. Or Illinois up to plus. There's, uh, there's your three-team yep, yep. teaser. That's a can't-lose teaser That's of the week. That's a can't, can't oh, lose can't lose teaser of the week right there. Okay. KU, seven-point teaser. Texas money line, KU plus 14, Illini, Iowa over uh, 27. I might just, we yeah. might just. Uh, yeah, let's just lock it in, boys. You can go ahead and throw uh, <laughs> Illinois money line in there as well. Just. You know, and Illinois money line. Just a little icing on the cake. All right, there. we'll 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 lock it in right now. Bet responsibly, of course, only in states that it's legal and bet responsibly. Yep. And then if uh, you know anyone who has a gambling problem, uh, please call one eight hundred gambler. It's a uh, or or in Tennessee, uh, they have a special number. <laughs> um, anything else from you boys? I think that in my head we covered it all. Uh, uh, I think that wraps up the uh, the uh, football talk on my end. Yeah, me as well. You know, thank you for having me, Aaron. This was a great experience. Uh, I'm glad I got to catch, you know, the, the last 15 minutes or so. But, you know, I really enjoyed being here with uh, Kyle, of course. And it was a great time. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, follow on socials, uh, Easy Bets. Ron Bets, and Blazin Bets for all of your locks. Um, uh, what do you say we ended off with uh, with a couple games of chess here? Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah, yeah, quick game of chess. So we might we might do a. Uh, this is just going to be me versus Gibbs, head head to head. Um, you know, we both play a little bit, and uh, let's see what happens. Head to head, Gib I'll, Gibbs will be white. I'll be white. Let's see. Let's start with uh, start with the classic E four. All right. Okay. Wow! Straight for the defense. Not going to. Uh, not going to put me in any sort of danger there. Okay, okay. I'll go with the two knights. Knights out, knights out. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So you just want to trade right off the bat. Okay. Uh, let's keep my pawn structure. I'll move my bishop over. Develop the knight. I'll get my king to safety. Quick castle there. Quick castle. Let's see. Okay. Just going here. Let's see. Let's see if we can get this bishop active over here. Oh, revealing your plans to me already. Mm, let's see. Mm, you know what they say about a to be queen active too early, huh? Yeah. I'm not afraid of that. Let's <laughs> see. Hmm. Wow. We're just going to push that center. We're gonna make the move. Interesting. Hmm. See, what are we attacking? What are you attacking there? A couple different things there. Uh, just, just doubling up defense on that you are, center you pawn. Are doubling up defense. On opening up pawn. and activating that bishop. Um, just gonna keep pushing. Keep pushing. Attacking. Yeah. Uh, I don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's just see if we can get anything going here. Okay. Oh, okay. So you're going for this fork here. Okay. So oh, am I? Am I? So let's see. I can't. Uh... Also, guys, any comments down below are helpful. You know, fan comments when we answer them the next week. That's real fun for us. Um, you know, seeing what you guys have got on your mind. Um, just by the way, I record these on Twitch. If you guys want me to shoot out the link and watch them live on Ron Betts um, with two S's on Twitter, um, we've had one viewer this time. I don't know who it is. They haven't said anything in the chat, but thanks for watching, man. <laughs> hmm. This is why we needed a timer. Yeah, man. I'm always really bad about defending that type of attack, but. And I got it later in the game. A lot of times it doesn't. I got to move him eventually, man. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good bishop because it defends that knight. Wait, 
<laughs> Wait. How was that? <laughs> when did this happen? Uh. When did that happen? Oh, when you moved your. Oh, no. Oh, no. When he. Fr- oh, oh, no! Oh, we got the misclick. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to him as a mouse slip. <laughs> no, we got the misclick. <laughs> yeah. Not oh, only. Technical not, difficulties. Leave in the comments below if you were screaming at the computer. <laughs> hung, hung the queen! Hung the queen! <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> why'd you just give me your knife? Oh, I didn't know it was defending. <laughs> right. The boys are rattled under pressure. Hey, wait, wait, hey, wait. We're only in that, you know, six, seven hundred range of players anyway, so we've also never done it on a board, you know, we've never this is our first uh, first attempt at a at a <laughs> Alright, we'll do a little trade of Rooney. Just um, keep trading. We'll activate activate that. Oh. Love using the term activate. That's just a power move. It's... Huh. Let's get that knight in there to see. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you're going to win material here, so what can I do? Fricker. Yeah, I guess I'll just, yep, here we go. All right. Um, really don't like your bishop here. I think it's a strong bishop, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine uh, making that trade. Personally, I don't love that. My knight wasn't doing too much on the side after I. You still have eight on material. That. that stupid queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't like that. I mean, I don't think I've castled on either, long side either side yet. I don't know. I am a fan of long side castle, and with your knight sort of applying some pressure. I mean, so so are your rooks, but. <laughs> try, oh. to, try to kick this knight out yeah, as possible. Yeah, you're trying to make me get out of town, which is exactly what you did. And blocked. Oh, yeah. well, I guess I defend. I defended that pawn already. Uh, you know what? We're just gonna. When in doubt, push your pawns. Push your pawns, guys. Is that your? Is that your? Is that your? Uh... Tip to the viewers. If you uh chess.com you, and just... you can request a game with me. Uh phase feeds, F-A-Z-E-F-I-E-D-S. Request a game with me, man. Let's play some chess. Um <laughs> go here. You're kidding me, man. You're beaking me. I'm just gonna chase you down one way or another. Let's see. No. Okay, okay. Push the pawns. Shoot. Oh, I didn't even know that that was defended, but I'll take it. Shout out to our sponsors for today's video too. Um, Chick Fil A. Shout out to Chick Fil A. Shout out to uh, Broken Compass Brewery in Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, shout out to uh, shout out Chess.com. Chess.com. Shout out Chess.com. Uh, thank you for sponsoring today's video. You know we know that you guys have invested a lot into us, and we hope that we can provide you with you know good returns. I don't like how this pawn is really sneaking into... How are you going to defend this? Um, like this, good sir. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Alright, I have an idea here. Let's see. I think it's going to work. Let's see. Is this going to work? I think that puts you in a Watch this. Tough spot. This is a little risky, but... Oh, I'm in check. Son of a rat. Yeah, you're in... 
Shoot. I I um, son of a rat. I don't know if I've ever said that before. Yeah, I'm kind of screwed here, man. I was thinking that I could go here and then defend, or you know, attack, defend, and then also protect there and my king. But that is a, I'm, <sighs> I'm I'm screwed. I'm freaking screwed. Huh? <laughs> ah. I mean, you're gonna get a queen. Huh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, checkmating. That's like <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always the hard part. Good game, good game, sir. Good game, good game. Uh, Tense game. The favorite one. Gibbs Gibbs has has had my back and chest I for. Mean, uh, you I know. mean, let's be honest. You did give me a mouse slip there, but or you, queen early in the game. Gave it back. To uh, me. Forty minutes. One of our longer episodes. Uh, thank you guys for watching, viewing, subscribing, commenting, uh, sharing. Uh, from from Aaron, from Kyle. And uh, Druvy, uh, anyone got last words? Rock Chalk, uh, wave the, anytime you see KU score, man, wave the wheat. Just do it for the boys. Come on, wave the wheat. ILO, guys. Aaron, thank you for having me on. I had a great time talking football, you know, playing some chess with you. Heck yeah. We'll do, we'll do it again here soon. Drew, uh, come give us some final words and uh, close us out here. It's been fun. Um, you know, next time uh, I'll be here from the beginning. You know, do some research before we'll have a great episode. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, guys. And uh, we're logging off.